All right, chapter 12, this is the nervous system uh, part three, which is related to the senses. So in section 12.1, our, our objective is going to be to basically differentiate between general senses and the special senses. And in the introduction here, we see that sensory receptors are sensitive to environmental changes and when there are environmental changes, it's going to initiate impulses to the brain and spinal cord. Our senses are divided into two groups. There are the general senses or somatic senses, and then there are special senses. And basically, uh, receptors associated with the skin, muscles, joints, and viscera provide the general somatic senses and the special senses are the senses whose sensory receptors are located in large, complex organs in the head. Um, this would be the five senses, which are vision, hearing, equilibrium, taste, and smell. So let's look at uh, receptors, sensation, and perception. In this section, our objective is to know and be able to name the five types of receptors and state the function of each, explain how receptors stimulate sensory impulses, and explain sensation production and adaptation. So receptor types. Basically, uh, receptor types are specialized structures at the end of the peripheral nerve that respond to stimuli. And they can be classified according to their location in the body, the stimulus type, and structure. So here we could see that there are sensory receptors, sensation, and perception. Sensory receptors are those specialized cells or multicellular structures that collect information from the environment. And in doing so, they're going to stimulate neurons to send impulses along sensory or afferent fibers to the brain. The sensation is the feeling that occurs when the brain becomes aware of the sensory impulse and the perception is a person's view of the stimulus and the way the brain will interpret that information. So in general, what you could see here are pathways uh, from uh, sensation to perception. An example uh, from an apple, you get the sensory receptors, the impulse in sensory fibers, the impulse reaches the central nervous system. The sensation is a new experience recalled memory. And then you get the perception. So if you think of an apple, you have smell, taste, sight, and hearing. In smell, you have the olfactory receptor cells. The olfactory nerve fibers leads that information to the central nervous system, the cerebral cortex. The sensation is a pleasant smell. And your perception would be the smell of an apple. So that would be the recall from memory. If you look at the taste of it, you have taste bud receptor cells. Sensory fibers in various cranial nerves are going to send that information to the cerebral cortex, and you're going to get the sensation of a sweet taste. And because of your perception or recall of memory, it's going to be the taste of an apple. And then you could also see there that uh, sight and hearing is also listed. So what are the receptor types? Uh, the receptor types, uh, you have uh, the classification is by stimulus type. So you have chemoreceptors, and chemoreceptors are going to respond to changes in chemical concentrations. And then you have pain receptors, and then these are going to respond to the extreme or harmful stimuli by producing the sensation of pain. That is, all types of, of uh, pain under extreme stimuli. You have thermal receptors, and thermal receptors are, uh, are, are sensitive to temperature change. You have mechanoreceptors, and those are receptors that are, uh, respond to change in pressure. And changes in pressure would include touch, pressure, vibrations, and stretch. And then you also have photoreceptors, and photoreceptors are in the retina of the eye, and they respond to light energy. Sensory impulses, all senses 
work in basically the same fashion. Sensory receptors collect information from the environment and if stimulated to the threshold, uh, the stimulate uh, sensory neurons from the peripheral nervous system are going to send the message to the brain and the central nervous system. And there, the cerebral cortex is going to form a perception or a person's particular view of that stimulus. So, in general, uh, sensation is the conscious or unconscious awareness of external or internal stimuli. And from that, you get the perception, and the perception would be the conscious awareness and interpretation of sensations. And a type of uh, perception would be projection. And the projection is the uh, projection is at the same time, a sensation forms, the cerebral cortex interprets it to seem to come from the receptors being stimulated. And that could be the brain projects the sensation back to its apparent source, or the projection allows a person to pinpoint the region of stimulation. As far as sensory adaptation, sensory adaptation is the process by which a sensory receptor becomes less stimulated following continuous stimuli. And then all sensory receptors except the pain receptors adapt to continuous stimuli, that is, undergo sensory adaptation. So you could see it's the ability to ignore unimportant stimuli. It involves a decreased response to a particular stimulus from the receptors and peripheral adaptation or along the central nervous system's pathways leading to the cerebral cortex. Uh, sensory impulses become less frequent and may cease. Stronger stimulus is required to trigger the impulse. So that's information about uh, perception and, and the senses. So let's look now at the general senses. And the general senses, uh, we should be able to, as far as our objectives in section 12.3, Describe the difference among receptors associated with the senses of touch, pressure, temperature, and pain. Describe how the sensation of pain is produced. And explain the importance of stretch receptors in muscles and tendons. So uh, our introduction here uh, with the general senses. Senses are associated with skin, muscles, joints, and viscera. So the sensory receptors, sensory receptors are sensitive to environmental changes and initiate impulses to the brain and spinal cord. So the senses are divided into two groups, the general somatic senses and those that are special senses. In uh, this section, uh, you're going to study the receptors associated with skin muscles, joints, and viscera, which provide general somatic senses. And then in the next section, you will study the special senses, which are the senses whose sensory receptors are located in the large complex organs in the head. And that would be the five special senses associated with vision, hearing, equilibrium, taste, and smell. So they are the three groups of general senses. You have the extraoceptive senses, and those are going to detect changes in the body's surface, touch, pressure, temperature. You have visceroceptive senses, and those are going to detect changes in the viscera. And this would be uh, where pain is, is going to be discussed. And then you have the proprioceptive senses, and this is going to detect changes in the muscles, tendons, and uh, body position. So we're going to look at joints playing a role there. So touch and pressure senses. Employ three types of receptors, and the three types of receptors would be free nerve endings, lamellated corpuscles, and then you have um, the tactile corpuscles, or Meisner's corpuscles. So free nerve endings are naked dendritic nerves in the epithelial connective tissue. So 
these are the simplest receptors and they give you that sense of itching. The Meisner's corpuscles are associated with tactile. Uh, they are encapsulated dendritic endings. They are surrounded by connective tissue wrappings. They are mechanoreceptors, so they detect light touch and are abundant in hairless portions of skin. And your hairless portions of skin are associated with the lips, fingertips, palms, soles, nipples, and external genitalia. The lamellated corpuscles are also encapsulated dendritic endings, except uh, these, these are, like the tactile ones, surrounded by connective tissue wrapping, wrappings. Uh, they are mechanoreceptors, but instead of light detection, they're going to detect heavy pressure. And it's going to be abundant in the deep subcutaneous tissues of the hands, feet, penis, clitoris, urethra, and the breast. So detect heavy pressure and vibrations. So here you can see the touch and pressure receptors. You can see those that are, are the free nerves um, in, in part A. So you have the free nerve endings, you have the epithelial cells, and you have the sensory or afferent nerve fiber. In B, you can see the, the tactile uh, nerves, so the tactile uh, sense there. So you have the epithelial cells, and you have the tactile corpuscle, or touch receptors. So this is going to detect uh, light touch. And then down here, you have the pressure receptor. So you have the laminated, laminated corpuscle, and that's going to detect heavy pressure down here in, in letter C. And you can see those and where they will lie within the skin. You do have temperature senses as well. Uh, temperature senses are the two types that respond to temperature change. You have warm receptors, and warm receptors are sensitive to temperature above 25 degrees Celsius. That is about 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, they are unresponsive at temperatures above 45 degrees Celsius. That would be 113 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, these pain receptors are also triggered as this temperature approaches uh, to produce that burning sensation. On the other end of the spectrum, you have the cold receptors, and the cold receptors are sensitive to temperatures between 10 degrees Celsius, or 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and 20 degrees Celsius, which is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Below 10 degrees Celsius, the pain receptors are triggered, producing a freezing sensation. Both undergo rapid sensory adaptation here. So both warm and cold uh, receptors will undergo rapid sensory adaptation. The sense of pain. Uh, the sense of pain is associated with free nerve endings that the receptors are, are used to detect pain. They are widely distributed throughout the skin and internal tissues, with the exception of the nervous tissue of the brain. So our pain receptors are going to function to protect against further tissue damage and uh, many are going to stimuli, or, or many stimuli, are going to trigger uh, these pain receptors. And it could be stimulus such as temperature, pressure, or chemoreceptors, so such thing as a chemical uh, a burn. Generally, do not adapt to continual stimuli. So uh, what would happen there is uh, the stimulus uh, by tissue damage, chemical mechanical forces, or extreme temperature, uh, adapt very little, if at all. You do have visceral pain. In visceral pain, uh, you have those pain receptors that are only visceral receptors to produce sensations. Uh, they can stretch and or have chemoreceptors, which are stimulated by pressure and or a change in chemical levels. Uh, they may feel as if it's coming from another area of the body, and this would be referred to as referred pain. Um, referred pain uh, may derive from common nerve pathways. So if you look, here we do see what referred pain looks like. Uh, referred pain may occur due to sensory impulses from two regions following a com common nerve pathway to the brain. 
Um, so if you look here, you, uh, you would have the heart, and here would be that referred pain if you're having uh, issues with the heart. So you'd have it here on the left arm. You'd also have it right here in the back area. If you have uh, issues with the uh, liver or gallbladder, you could see the issues as far as ventral and then dorsal, you would have it right here and right here. So you can look at all the other uh, little picture areas here to see the associations with referred pain. <clears throat> as far as uh, sense of pain and pain pathways, uh, there are two types. You have acute pain fibers and chronic pain fibers. Acute pain fibers occur rapidly. They're about 0.1 seconds. It is not felt in deep tissues. Uh, it's a sharp, fast pricking pain conducted on myelinated fibers that ceases when stimulus is removed. So here we have that artificial pain relief, uh, which is usually adequate and well localized. You also have chronic pain fibers or C fibers. Uh, these begin slowly and increase in intensity over a period of several seconds or minutes. Uh, this is associated with dull, aching, burning, or throbbing pain. It can occur anywhere. It is conducted on unmyelinated fibers, and it may continue after the stimulus is removed. Therefore, uh, uh, natural pain relief or narcotics are needed because it's difficult to pinpoint, but it can be blocked by narcotics, which are controlled substances. And here's where we see the CCC, chronic C fibers control, controlled substances. So a little acronym there. So regulation of pain impulses. The regulation of pain impulses, uh, inappropriate pain is when pain sensations are not warning of impending tissue damage. And there, you could see three things here. You have the thalamus, uh, which allows a person to be aware of pain. You have the cerebral cortex, which judges intensity of pain, locates the source of pain, and produces emotional and motor responses to pain. And then you have the pain inhibiting substances, uh, encophalins, uh, serotonin, and endorphins are all pain inhibiting substances. Proprioception, actually, let me quick go back here. Um, looking at the uh, pain inhibiting substances, uh, these are going to be used uh, for inappropriate pain. It's a natural pain release that is produced by the central nervous system. And basically what they do is they're going to inhibit the nerve pathways uh, in the spinal cord, so things like serotonin and the endorphins. And basically what does that does is it stops the pain signal from reaching the brain. So therefore you would have uh, no uh, perception of that pain. So you do have the artificial pain relievers. Artificial pain, reliever, li pain relievers are OTC drugs and they block the formation of the post uh, gladins which are going to stimulate uh, the nociceptors. And this would include things like aspirin, uh, which is acetylsalic acid, Tylenol, acetaminophen, and Motrin, which is ibuprofen. You also have narcotics. And the narcotics are, are going to mimic, mimic uh, the natural pain relief by blocking nerve impulses. And those are include such drugs as morphine, Vicodin, and Demerol. Uh, surgery may be ne necessary. Uh, you could get a, a cordodectomy, uh, which is severing of nerve sensory areas. And you could also have a, a rhizotomy, which is the cutting of the spinal dorsal sensory nerve roots. And those would be uh, two ways in which uh, surgery could help uh, some things there. 
Lastly, let's quick do uh, the proprioception. Uh, proprioception is the stretch receptors are called proprioreceptors, and they are going to send information to the spinal cord and brain concerning the length and tension of muscles. So that's where we, we see stretching coming into play here. Uh, there are two main types. Uh, there are the muscle spindles. There are two main types, the, the muscle spindles. Those are located in, let's go here. Uh, these are located in the skeletal muscle near their junctions with tendons. Uh, this sensory receptor, receptor is stimulated when the skeletal muscle relaxes and therefore the spindle is stretched. The action produced is called the stretch reflex. It helps maintain the desired position of a limb despite other force, forces tending to move it. Then you have Golgi tendon organs. So here you can see the Golgi tendon organs and tendons. And the Golgi tendon organs are found in tendons close to their muscle attachment. Each is connected to a set of skeletal muscle fibers and is innervated by a sensory neuron. So here you can see that uh, Golgi tendon organ and its, its innervation of that sensory neuron there or that sensory nerve fiber. These receptors have high thresholds and are stimulated by increased tension. And that increased tension is going to stimulate a reflex with an opposite effect as seen in muscle spindles. And it's going to help maintain posture and prevent tearing of the tendon. And then lastly, you have the visceral senses. And the visceral senses include the laminated corpuscles and free nerve endings in internal organs. And these receptors convey the sense of fullness after a meal or discomfort of intestinal gas and the pain that signals that of a heart attack. So uh, here is ending. So here we see the summary of receptors of the general senses in the chart. And we'll pick up with 12.4, uh, which will include the general senses and um, or 12.4, which would be the special senses and then lifespan changes.